Autonomous driving has recently taken the world by storm with Elon Musk's rollout of self-driving Teslas. But did you know that autonomous driving has actually been around for over 100 years? Today, we'll be delving into the rather exciting history and technology behind autonomous driving. Let's get into the video. The Foundation of Autonomous Driving The humble beginnings of autonomous driving as we know it dates back to 1925. When Houdina Radio Control revealed their radio-controlled car, the car was named the American Wonder and would be seen driving through the traffic-filled streets of New York City. The technology featured a transmitting antenna that received signals from a remote control handled by someone outside of the car. The signals would ignite small electrical motors that would allow the vehicle to move. The car could start its own engine, change gears, and even toot its own horn. However, the operator of the radio-controlled car lost control twice, and unfortunately, the car ended up crashing. Shortly after, in the streets of Milwaukee, the car distributor Aiken Motor showed off another radio-controlled autonomous vehicle known as the Phantom Auto in December of 1926. Fast forward 15 years, and at the 1939 World's Fair event, the renowned American theatrical and industrial designer Norman Bell Geddes showcased his Futurama exhibit sponsored by General Motors. He had invented a radio-controlled electric car that was moved by electromagnetic fields fixed into a roadway. In 1940, Bell Geddes shared his hopes for innovative highway design and transportation advancements in his book. He pushed for humans to not be driving cars as early as 1960. Some of his hopes, such as humans being completely removed from the driving process, did not come true, although he did anticipate the interstate highway system. However, by 1958, General Motors had in fact turned Geddes' initial self-driving car concept into reality. The First Self-Driving Cars General Motors experimented throughout the 1950s and developed cars known as Firebirds. These were promoted as cars that could allow drivers to relax while they traveled over highways automatically. By 1958, they had developed a car that used sensors to detect a current flowing through a wire embedded in the road. This current could then be manipulated in order to direct the steering wheel left or right. The major American electronics company, RCA Labs, was busy inventing at the same time and created a car that worked in a similar way. It was directed by impulses coming from a circuit laid into some flooring to steer and RCA Labs even created a 400-foot highway strip that they tested their cars on. The two competitors joined forces for a while, with General Motors stepping in to collaborate in the development of the test highway. They supplied two cars with radio receivers, audible and visual warning devices, and were able to simulate automatic brake control, steering, and acceleration. All of this was exciting and successful and it was expected at the time that the system could be commercialized by 1975. From Lunar Rovers to Smart Cars The 60s were an exciting time, with futuristic developments occurring in both autonomous driving and the space race. Researchers were beginning to think about how they could land vehicles on the moon and drive them around. This led to the production of the Stanford Cart, which was originally designed as a lunar rover. It was a simple piece of equipment basically just a cart equipped with a video camera and controlled by a remote control with a long cable. It was further developed and could soon autonomously detect a line on the ground and follow it quite accurately. Cameras play a vital role in autonomous vehicles today, and this cart was just the beginning of that journey. The very first truly autonomous car was finally revealed in 1977. The Japanese had been hard at work improving the ideas of the Stanford cart and were able to develop a camera system that sent data to a computer, where signal processing occurred in order to develop images of the road ahead as it drove. The car was installed with two cameras and was even able to travel at speeds of 30 kilometers per hour. One of the greatest achievements to do with robotic mobility occurred in 1979 when the Stanford cart successfully crossed a room filled with obstacles without any intervention from people. It took about five hours, but was a very exciting milestone in the development of driverless cars. 
The pioneer of the autonomous car. Mercedes-Benz stepped onto the autonomous motor scene in the 1980s with their vision-guided robotic van. It was designed by a team led by German aerospace engineer Ernst Dickmans at a university in Munich, Germany. Dickmans' success led to him being dubbed the pioneer of the autonomous car. The cars were fitted with cameras, sensors, microprocessors, and other complex software, which allowed them to reach speeds of more than 90 kilometers per hour on trafficless streets. The engineer kept working hard and seven years later had developed another type of autonomous car. This car would recognize road markings, which was a huge step forwards. It was test-driven near Paris and reached speeds of 130 kilometers per hour. I wonder who would get in trouble if an autonomous car was pulled over for speeding? Hmm, food for thought. Let us know what you think in the comments below. The car was also able to change lanes in this test drive. Dickman's research and success was crucial in pivoting current research away from buried cables to visual-based systems to guide cars. By 1990, Carnegie Mellon University began to investigate how they could integrate neural networks into the processing of images of the road and steering controls. They developed a self-driving car called the NavLab 5. This was successfully taken on a road trip dubbed No Hands Across America, from Pittsburgh to San Diego. Researchers from the university controlled the speed and braking, but everything else was autonomous. It required a little bit of help with some obstacle avoidance, but was 98.2% effective at autonomous driving. It was even able to last for 70 miles without human intervention. Neural networks developed at this university have become the standard basis for autonomous driving control strategies for auto cars that are still used today. If you're enjoying the video so far, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you can continue receiving interesting high quality content from us. Grand Challenge Do you think you have what it takes to win the Grand Challenge? This was a competition developed by a research arm of the US Department of Defense called DARPA. It was designed to encourage the development of robotic cars, as by the early 2000s, the autonomous car industry was really taking off. The Grand Challenge was a long-distance competition for autonomous vehicles, held in 2004. Fifteen vehicles signed up, but unfortunately none succeeded in completing the difficult course along 150 miles of desert roadway. DARPA was keen to try again, and in 2005, they were able to double the prize money to $2 million. The 2005 Grand Challenge was a success. 23 teams signed up, and 5 were able to finish the course. Stanford University was crowned the winner, after racing through 3 tunnels, over 100 turns and steep cliffs in just under 7 hours. In 2007, this race was conducted again but was made more challenging by being set in an urban environment. Autonomous Cars Today Nowadays, many more popular car brands such as Ford, Audi, Toyota, Volvo, Nissan, Volkswagen, and BMW are taking on the autonomous driving phenomenon. Even Google released a driverless car in 2012 when they licensed a modified Toyota Prius. This was the first license for an autonomous car ever issued in America. The car did a test drive of 14 miles, but didn't go around roundabouts, school zones, or rail crossings. Despite all of this, it still passed the test, but we aren't quite sure how. Driverless cars come with a whole range of safety and legal issues, which has led to some car companies stepping down from the challenge. Uber even stated that they weren't going to use them as a result of safety concerns, legal issues, and it all costing way too much money. Elon Musk stepped onto the scene with Tesla's Autopilot, introduced in the Model S, which was announced in October of 2014. Their Autopilot technology was installed as a software update for their cars, allowing them to autonomously drive. A self-parking feature was added to a 2016 update. However, disaster struck in 2016 when the first fatal crash with an automated vehicle happened in Florida. A Tesla Model S in its auto mode failed to brake when a tractor turned in front of it, causing the driver to die in the collision. 
Currently, there are many semi-autonomous vehicles on the road, with safety features such as assisted or automated parking, automatic braking, and steering control. The technology has come a long way, and sensors and GPS systems are becoming more and more advanced as further research is done in this field. Autonomous cars have the potential to make driving much safer, as 95% of car accidents are caused by human error. Take humans out of the equation and you are left with much safer roads. The history behind autonomous driving is complicated and has come a long way since the first prototypes were developed many years ago. We have learned how to use the technology to our advantage and have succeeded even in the face of many trials and challenges. We wonder what the pioneers of autonomous cars would think of the fancy driverless cars that are found on our roads today. With all of this happening within the last 100 years, what do you think going on a road trip will look like in the next 100 years? Let us know your thoughts below. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.